Hi, I'm Kunal, and in this particular video, we'll be understanding open interest, the difference between open interest and volume. And to begin with, we'll uh, have a look at the option chain, and we'll see how the open interest is placed in that option chain, and we'll also understand, you know, what all things you need to look at in an option chain. So, starting with the option chain first, I open the option chain screen on the Dhan uh, web. As you can see, we have the strike price in the middle for both the calls and put options. All right, uh, the option expiry that I'm looking at is 29th June. All right, we have the expiry prices here. And then we have the last traded prices for both calls and put options for different expiry prices, as we can see. Then we have the changes in the uh, prices of the call and put option. Again, that is something that we uh, can understand very easily. Next up we have is implied volatility. In case if you want to understand what implied volatility is or how the VIX index works, you can refer to either one of our videos that we have curated on YouTube itself that talks about the VIX index or you can understand implied volatility completely through one of our courses that is only based on uh, understanding implied volatility in options. All right. Then we have uh, volume and then we have OI. All right. So volume is basically how many times a particular contract is getting traded and open interest is uh, the contract being opened uh, at a given point in time. All right, so I'll give you a very simple example here. Say, for example, there is two. There are two parties, uh, A and B. All right, A goes long call. All right, now to go long call, you know, there has to be a person who goes short call. All right, they make a trade. All right, they make a trade. Now, right now, there's one contract that is opened and one trade that has happened. So, in this case, the volume is also one and the open interest is also one. All right, that is pretty simple. Now, say, for example, uh, initially B had the notion that, you know, the particular index or the stock price will fall. All right. But now later on, he has changed his opinion. Now he thinks that the price or the index will increase. All right. So if he has that opinion, what he'll do is he'll square off his short call position. Now to square off his short call position, what he'll do is he'll take a long call. All right. So his position is nullified. And to take a long call, there has to be a person C who goes short call. All right. Who goes short call. Now again, one more trade has happened. All right. So the volume from one increases to two. All right. The volume goes from one to two, but the open interest still remains one because there is one person who is holding the long call position and there is one person who is holding the short call position. Uh, party B does not hold anything. All right. So that is something that we need to understand that volume is separate and open interest is separate. Open interest is basically kitne contracts mere open at a given point in time, whereas volume is basically kitna wo particular contract ya wo particular share trade ho raha hai. All right. So this is something that you need to understand. So now we have understood what open interest is. So what I'll do is, you know, to make things more clearer, I'll have a couple of examples of open interest. And with that, we'll be able to understand open interest completely. Now, given that you understand open interest, you know, you can uh, use it for data analysis, either in the case of futures or options. All right. So that is the whole idea here. That once you start understanding open interest very well, you can run data analysis on open interest and then you can also figure out your trades using that. So uh, say for example, if you want to understand where, where uh, if there is a long buildup or a short buildup, you can easily understand using the data of open interest. In case if this interests you a lot, all right, we are coming up with a course on open interest data analysis for trading of futures and options with Jyoti Budhya. So we'll, we'll attach the link in the uh, description and you can easily go and check out the course in case if this interests you a lot. Now coming back to our original example of understanding open interest very well with multiple uh, case studies. What I'll do is I'll uh, go, go back to the Excel sheet that I have prepared. All right. In this case, I've taken four cases. All right. Very simple four cases. Uh, we'll understand open interest in each of the following cases and see how it works out. All right. So in case one, as you can see, all right, there's Mr. A who buys 10 lots of XYZ company. And there's Mr. B who shorts these 10 lots of XYZ company. So there's Mr. A buying 10 lots and there's Mr. B who is shorting 10 lots. Now I'm simply going with the position of long and short. I'm not talking about any particular option or futures. You could, you know, attach anything to that. But here there are 10 long positions being made and 10 short positions being made. So in that case, we need to understand that the open interest would also be 10. Let's see how. So we have the participants here, as you can see in the case one. There's A, there's B. All right. In case of A, the open position is long. All right. So uh, below long position, we have entered the number of 10. And in uh, for participant B, you know, there is an open position of uh, open short position of uh, 10. So whatever short positions we have, we have uh, put it across with a negative sign. So that is how, that is why we have uh, written minus 10 here. So net position of the long side is 10. 
net position of the short side is also 10 all right so 10 and minus 10 if that is how we can uh, have a uh, if that is how we can understand this so remember one thing open interest is always a zero sum game all right so if we have 10 long positions we need to have 10 short positions and the sum has to be nullified to zero all right so that is a zero sum game but right now how many open contracts do we have there are there is a who has 10 positions open as a long party and there's b who has 10 positions open as a short party so right now we have 10 open contracts which is nothing but your open interest all right remember it's a zero sum game in terms of knowing the long and short position but in terms of number of contracts that are open that will give you the right picture or the clearer answer in terms of what open interest number do we have as of now all right now what we'll what we'll do is this will make this our base case and in this base case we'll make some variants to it all right we'll bring some variations to it so say for example again let's uh, read the case 2 and see how the open interest data would change here so we have mr a here again who goes uh, 10 lots long and then there's mr b who goes 10 uh, lots short now this is the initial uh, positioning now what is being done here is he uh, this is followed this entire trade is followed up by mr a squaring off five lots of the same company against mr b all right so let's see how we'll put this across so initially uh, a had a long position of 10 and in front of that b had a short position of minus 10 so that is how these two data are able to tell us now there is a short position taken by mr a and there's a long position taken by mr b all right so since there is a short position we you know we have used the minus sign for mr a here that is minus 5 and since there is a long position for Mr. B, all right, we have used the positive sign. So, uh, therefore, we can see that as participant A, he, ha he had 10 long positions. Now, since he has taken 5 short positions, so net net, he has 5 positions, all right, or 5 open contracts from his side. And since he has 5 open contracts on the long side, there has to be someone who has 5 uh, open contracts on the short side. So, here, there is no other participant. We are only talking about A and B here. So, A had... Uh, 10 and 5 and B has 5 and minus 10. So, 5 long and minus 10 short. So, net net minus 5 is what he has. So, again, uh, net net there are only 5 open contracts for long uh, the, for the long party and 5 net net open contracts for the short party. So, the open interest turns out to be 5. All right. Again, see that uh, the zero sum game again holds up for our open interest topic as well and we are able to see that clearly. Now, let's take case 3. All right. In this case, again, we'll take a variant of the base case. Uh, Mr. A buys 10 lots of XYZ company and Mr. B uh, shorts 10 lots of XYZ company again. So, in this case till now, you know, as much as I have read, the open interest is 10 because uh, A has gone long with 10 contracts and B has gone short with 10 contracts. Now, this is followed up by Mr. A squaring off 5 lots against Mr. C who has to go long. Now, why the squaring off is happening against Mr. C here? So, say A initially had... 10 open contracts as a long party so in case if he's squaring it off he'll have to take five short contracts all right now since he's taking a short contracts mr a mr c who is a new party here in the entire arrangement will be going long here all right will be going long here so let's just put those things in the uh, in the box and we'll understand so participant a had 10 long positions initially all right and then he took five short positions all right so net net five positions is what he has as a long party now, Mr. Uh, B had short positions of minus 10. So, that remains unchanged because the next transaction happened between Mr. A and Mr. C. And lastly, we have the third party that is Mr. C who has gone long. All right. Who has gone long because Mr. A had gone short. So, he has, since he has gone long, we have added uh, number 5 with a positive sign here. So, again, the net position would be positive 5. As you can see, the zero sum game is still holding. We have 5, 5, 10 on the long side and minus 10 on the short side. So, how many contracts do we have open here? 5, 5 on the long side, that is 10 and minus 10 on the short side. So, again, the number of open contracts are what? Are nothing but 10 here. All right. Again, let's take uh, another example. All right. Very similar to the third case here. Mr. A buys 10 lots of XYZ company and Mr. B shorts 10 lots of XYZ company. Again, we have 10 open interest here because 10 long and 10 short positions are being made simultaneously. This is followed up by Mr. B squaring of 5 lots against Mr. D who goes uh, 5 lots short. Alright, so very simple here. Initially, we had 10, 10. So, that number has been put across here. Now, Mr. B originally had a short position. So, he'll take he'll be taking uh, a long position and he'll be buying those 5 lots. So, that is what he has done. Now, since this guy is going long, 
the other party that is Mr. D will have to go short. So that is how we'll have minus 5 here. Alright, so 10 long positions with A remains intact and then we have 5, uh, five short positions with two parties. So again, the open interest remains 10 and the zero sum game still holds. Alright, so the idea of open interest is very simple. What we need to understand here is how many open contracts are there. Alright, so if there is a transaction between A to B, B to C and C to D. Alright, or say for example A to B, B and B to C. So in that case, again, there will be only one contract that is open as we saw uh, as an example on the board. Alright, so pretty simple. Uh, you just need to understand how it works around and once you get the basics right of open interest, you will be able to understand the data of open interest very well, be it, be it for call options, be it, be it for put options, be it, be it for futures, all right. That understanding will come in and this will solve one of your column that we have in our entire option chain. All right, we have the VIX, we have the uh, IV here, we have the uh, open interest here, we have the volumes here. All right, so we understand these things. There are, however, two more interesting columns that we need to understand that is delta and theta. All right, these are generally two uh, Greeks that people should understand while they are trading options. So that is something that again we'll discuss in our future videos. But for now, we need to understand that whenever you are analyzing the entire option chain, one of the most important component is open interest and using that open interest data, you can make your trades as well. So in case if you want to make sure that your basics of options are very clear, make sure you remain subscribed to the channel and at the very same time, keep watching this entire playlist because this is where we'll be uh, delivering all the basics of options trading in a very lucid and simplified manner.